Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. it is to be alive, but ah, to be young is heaven. Youth, squandered gold so quickly spent. But how else could it be? If youth were the careful and prudent time of life, how could one enjoy it? If only you could have youth at a mature age, when you would really know what to do with it. But that would be like having your cake and eating it. Well, who says you can't? You want me to become a spy, Colonel? What a horrid word, spy. No, never. Say better, a guide. But you're saying I must... Re Different? No. Aren't those who ridicule the people's government also very sick? Aren't they also in desperate need of help? Well... As a true friend... Have you a choice? Our mystery drama, If I Can't Have You, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Bob Caliban and Russell Horton. It is sponsored in part by ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Oh, come on. Stain over paint? Now you can stain over paint with Olympic Latex Stain. Stain over paint? Why, that's impossible. Olympic Latex Stain covers paint with rich, mellow color, cleans up in water, and lasts for years. Great idea. And right now, you'll save two fifty dollars a gallon on Olympic Latex July 14th at participating Olympic dealers. Attractive, talented, famous. Victor Volovsky plays the violin. Paskovia Suslov is the cellist. Sergei Berdayov is at the piano. Each is a virtuoso. And they have combined to form this magnificent chamber music trio. They live in a country where this type of music is taken very seriously. They call themselves the February Trio. In their country, February is almost a holy word because it is the month of the Great Revolution, an event that not only changed their nation, but the rest of the world as well. However, here we are in a glittering concert hall where the trio, as usual, is holding its audience spellbound. But, as you will notice, the beautiful harmony, the marvelous blend, the magnificent togetherness seems to exist only on stage. Sergey, 
Shouldn't we take another bow? Oh, why don't you relax, Victor? But they're still on their feet out there. Mm, I suppose we could milk them for another ovation. <laughs> Look who's suddenly talking about milking an audience. I could have gone out for a smoke during your 16-bar solo. Oh, well, the two of you stop it. Now, act your age. Dearest Praskovia, if Victor acted his mental age, we should have to buy him a perambulator. <laughs> Victor, are we having supper at the apartment tonight? Of course we are. Oh, uh, no, uh, we're not. Why not? Uh, I have an interview for, for the television. Oh, with whom? With whom do you think? With Mademoiselle Fifi. Why don't you cut it out, Sergei? Her name is Marina Trigorin. Mm, you should hear her. Mon cher, you play with such furls. Formidable. Where does she come off talking like that? She's a girl from the Donuts Basin. Her old man's a coal miner. Sergei. You're just jealous. Me? Jealous of, of who? What? Does the distinguished critic of Red Music Magazine go out of her way to interview you? Red Music Magazine. You have to be a party hack to write for it. This Marina Trigorin with her pathetic pretensions masquerading as a person of culture. She's a joke. Well, why do you have to be interviewed at night, Victor? Darling, the program is on tonight. Now, where's the interview to be held? At Comrade Tregoran's apartment. Oh, don't you love the way he says that? Comrade Tregoran. Makes her sound like some serious, austere spinster. And she isn't? Everyone knows she got the job because of certain physical attributes. Are you going to listen to him and ruin your evening, Prescovia? Well, why don't we all go to the interview? Oh, uh, we can't. It's, uh... A rather small apartment. Oh? And it will be filled with uh, technicians and cameras and cables. You know, those things turn into a madhouse. And besides, Marina doesn't like to have strangers on the set. Strangers? Oh, well, you know, uh, people who are not directly involved in the telecast. Besides, the poor girl is really quite shy. I'm going home, Victor. Praskovia, darling. You know I could never seriously look at another woman. Just try not to be late. You are a great help, Sergei. You are not being honest with her, Victor. Ah, Sergei. Because one enjoys the nectar of a rose, does it mean one must forego the sweetness of all the other flowers in the field? Oh, Victor, you have absolutely no moral sense. How can you say that? You don't deserve Praskovia. Nobody deserves Praskovia. She's an angel. Too good for any of us. Well, then let us say, you deserve her least. And who deserves her most, Sergei? You? I would make her happy. And what do I make her? Miserable. Evidently, she would rather be miserable with me than happy with you. Hmm. Well, what do you plan to talk about on this interview? I don't know what Marina is going to ask. Oh, yes, you do. Stupid, insipid questions. They're the best kind. Really? They're the safe. Ah! Safety, that's the watchword, isn't it? Sergei, what's gotten into you this evening? I know what you'll talk about. How the aspirations of the people are expressed in music. What nonsense. Does the music care who plays it? You might be a little bit more careful how you talk. The only people who truly have aspirations in this country are the ones who are in prison. Sergei, don't say that. Not even to me. Not even in private. Why, Victor? Would you ever inform on me? How do you know this dressing room is in bugs? Why can't we talk about the government and what we really think of these insipid television programs? Because we would wind up being exiled to the mines. That's the kind of government we have. Come on, Sergei. When did this country have a government that was any good? For the last thousand years, no matter who was running it, didn't the government always oppress the people? So, you admit it. The truth is, the tyranny does not affect you and me. It's bad, perhaps, for writers, artists, scientists, people like that, whose stock and trade is ideas. But you and I, we're musicians. We deal in emotions. Aren't we free to concertize as we like? I'm sorry I started the discussion you refuse to see it. You're angry about Praskovia. What can I tell you, Sergei? The better man won. Oh, Sergei. May I come in, Praskovia? All right. I, um, I brought some bread and cheese and sausages. I, I knew with Victor away you'd forget all about supper. You always know how to do the little things. Well, that's probably...
simply because the big things are beyond me. Don't say that. Mm, I failed to accomplish the biggest and most important thing in my life. Pascodia, what do you see in him? Mm, everything smells delicious. Oh, Sergei. I'm really sorry. He's careless, unreliable. Is this how you talk about your best friend? Because he is my best friend. He has no secrets from me. Unfortunately, love doesn't ask the right questions. Actually, love asks no questions. <laughs> if love were sane and sensible, I'd be in love with you. Would you? You're a very logical, dependable person, Sergei. Both feet on the ground. You give a woman a feeling of security. And still, you chose Victor. <laughs> I didn't choose him. Love chose him. Well, it's almost time for that uh, television program. Oh, must we watch that abomination? No, you mustn't be so hard on people, Sergei. Oh, wait till you hear this woman. You'll think I'm being kind to her. Go, go ahead. Turn on the set. Good evening, citizens. This is Marina Trigorin with another sparkling melodic page from Red Music. And who is sitting here beside me but the world's handsomest violinist, Viktor Ivanovich Velovsky. Darling, show the people that radiant smile. Mm. This is going to be worse than I thought. The French have a word for him. Adorable. Victor Ivanovich, darling, say something. Well, turn him off. He's said enough. Well, he hasn't said anything yet. He's already said everything. What do you mean? I can tell by the way they look at each other. What can you tell? Everything. They exchange the glances of a man and a woman who already know each other very well. Well, turn on the set. But you, you told me to turn it off. Well, turn it on. His playing, as everyone knows, is is absolutely, as they say in French, comme il faut. Millions know the man of music, but who knows the man himself? Is it true that you and that very sweet Praskovia Suslav, the cellist in your trio, are engaged? Oh, yes. Does Praskovia know how lucky she is? Sometimes. Oh, turn it off. I wish you'd make up your mind. It isn't going to get any better. Is it true that you and that very sweet Praskovia Suslav are engaged? Oh, you'd think I was a chocolate bar. What does he see in her, anyhow? Oh, she is pretty. Oh, what am I going to do, Sergei? You could marry me. Hmm. Where did you find such heavenly sausage? I said you could marry me. Oh, dear, Sergei, I don't love you. You think you don't love me. I know. I don't love you. Only because you refuse to give yourself a chance to try me for a while. Try you? I love you so completely you don't have to share me with anyone, especially Mademoiselle Fifi. Oh, this caviar divine. But it's not that good. Love me instead of Victor. No, but you're his best friend. Then why isn't he here to protect his interests? He becomes infatuated easily. But he always comes back to me. One day he'll meet someone who won't let him come back. He may have met her already. Sergei, I... No, oh, you're worried. Already there are shadows, little lines of care on your adorable face. Praskovia, be in love with me. But, but I'm not. Try it. Who knows, perhaps you actually will begin to love me... At any rate, it will do you no end of good. How? Why does Victor feel free to try his wings? Because he is secure in the knowledge that his own little bird will never leave the nest. She will wait patiently, lovingly for him to return. Isn't that so? Oh, well... Why not give Victor something to worry about? I... What have you got to lose? Praskovia, pretend to love me. What can happen? Either Victor will behave himself, or you will discover that all along, I've been the one for you. I don't know. Look, we shall turn on the television set. No. It should be against the law for one man to be so handsome and so talented. You see how she clutches his arm? 
Your talons like a vulture. Turn it off. How he eats it up. The fool. Shall we give Victor something to worry about? Yes, Sergey. We shall definitely give Victor something to worry about. These things, they start out innocently enough. When the loved one's attention begins to wander, someone suggests making him jealous. However, as no less an authority on love than our own George Washington said, when we are young, we are made of highly combustible materials. But what burns brightly is consumed quickly. You must agree that we are dealing here with some highly volatile objects. We'll have some sparks in Act Two. Jealousy is always born together with love as a very discerning French philosopher once said. And therefore, we may safely assume that they are twins. And not just ordinary twins, but Siamese twins at that. They are indivisible. Where you find one, you must also deal with the other. Love and jealousy. Has anyone ever been able to separate them? Not in this particular story, anyhow. We have no time to lose, darling Pascovia. You must leave at once. Leave you? Of course. You shouldn't be here when Victor returns. Where can I go? To my place. Your place? From now on, you're to live with me. But uh, I don't love you. For the time being, you'll pretend to live with me. Well, as long as that's clearly understood. It's understood for just as long as you care to understand it. All right. When you get to know me, really know me as a man, not just as the pianist in a trio, you will awake one morning and exclaim, Sergei is the one that I truly love. Oh, you are right. This will teach him a lesson. Absolutely. He'll come crawling back to me on his hands and knees. That stupid television person. Does Pascovia know how lucky she is? Sometimes. Oh. You'll eat those words, my fine Victor. Shall we answer it? It's your apartment, Sergei. It has now also become your apartment, Boscovia. Let me in, Boscovia. I know you're there. Go away, Victor. You're becoming a nuisance. Open the door. We'll see you promptly at nine in the morning for rehearsal. I'll keep ringing this bell all night. Oh, let him in, Sergei. As you like, darling. What's going on here? Well, that should be obvious. I no longer choose to live with you. Instead, I have chosen to live with Sergei. Why? Because, uh, in answer to a question posed by that intellectual giantess, Mademoiselle Fifi, I do not know how lucky I am to be engaged to the adorable, desirable Victor Ivanovich Volovsky. Roskovia, you know I love you. Me? Among others. And where do you figure in this, Sergei? Sergei is a fine, spiritual, perceptive human being. Yes. Oh, this fine, spiritual, perceptive human being doesn't hesitate one second to steal his best friend's fiance. Steal? Is this some bourgeois society where one human being is the property of another? Oh, cut it out, Sergei. Go ahead, Proskovia. Live with Sergei for a while. See what a pain in the neck this fine, perceptive human being can be. Spiritual. <laughs> oh, you'll come crawling back to me. I may or may not forgive you. Yes, uh, is there any mail for me, Olga Fedorovna? Oh, the government should have a special post office just for you. Yeah, all right. I'll 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 look at all of it later. So, Victor, things must be turbulent at home, no? Turbulent? Why? I, I have never heard the trio playing better. Everyone agrees. Oh, is that so? Oh, yes. The more discord at home, the more harmony on stage. Is that so? 
She loves you, Victor. But she lives with Sergei. Oh, uh, the Asian. And only because you blonde, that blo- blonde, uh, uh, that, uh, how, how do the Americans say? Ah, that blonde bombshell. Send that one packing. Were there any calls for me, Olga Fedorovna? Calls? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, you are to phone this number. I uh, have written down here. Oh? Who, who is it? I, I, I'm not to tell anyone of this call. Don't are you? Well, that sounds like the secret police. Oh, are you mad? You must never say that. How do you know this office isn't bugged? <sighs> I don't have enough problems. Come in. Yes? I, I was uh, told to see a Colonel Rostov. Uh... I am Colonel Svetlana Rostov. Oh. Well, uh, how do you do? I, I had expected some... Um... <laughs> Burly, bearded Cossack? Well, maybe... Uh, won't you have a chair? Comrade Velovsky? Oh, thank you. Uh, comrade Colonel. <laughs> and I-, I-, I can tell you right now, the answer is yes. Uh, the answer is yes? Well, absolutely. <laughs> you see, uh, Comrade Colonel, uh, ever since I was summoned uh, here, invited. I... Invited. Oh, oh, of course, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, cordially invited. I asked myself, why should the secret police want... Uh, the guardians of the people. Uh, that's exactly what I intended to say. <laughs> yes, the uh, guardians of the people, <laughs> who, I might add, never sleep in their zeal. <laughs> Please continue. Well, uh, I asked myself, uh, why should they want to see me? Me, Victor Volosky, a musician, a, a person who has done nothing else in his life but play music. Nothing else? Play music. You've made love. <laughs> I ask you, Comrade Colonel, what else is there? <laughs> uh, you were saying... Oh, yeah, well, I, I said to myself, the only thing they could possibly ask of me is to uh, have the February trio play at a benefit concert for the widows and orphans of the secret police. Ah, uh, the guardians of the people. Uh, yes, yes, those uh, valiant, ever-watchful guardians of the people. <laughs> yeah, when I think of the poor, work-worn widows and, and those thin, large children. I, I, I tell you, Comrade Colonel, my heart weeps. <laughs> of course, the, the, the trio shall be honored to play. Uh, that is not why you were invited to come here. It, 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 uh, no. Well, but then, Comrade Colonel, may I ask... Of wh- course. It is our wish that you supply us with um, information. Information? Mm-hmm. Well, what sort of information? All sorts of information. Such as? Statements that might injure the people. You mean you want me to be a spy? A spy? Comrade Victor, how can you say such an ugly word? But I... See, Comrade Victor, the people's got... Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary, only prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Government must be on constant alert. Of course. The imperialist enemy is everywhere. I wouldn't doubt that, but... Spreading the infection of treason. Now, at first, treason may consist of cynical, sarcastic remarks, little jibes at the people's government. These may seem harmless enough, but they are the prelude to a more serious counter-revolutionary activity. Tell me, Conrad Victor, have you heard anyone speaking in that manner recently? I beg your pardon? Have you heard anyone saying, well, um, nasty things about the people's government? Have I heard anyone say uh, things? Uh, no. Do not hesitate to let me know if you do. I mean, you may think this makes you an informer, but it doesn't. No? No. Of course 
astronaut, informer. Oh, what a hard, ugly word. Yeah. In truth, what you become is something beautiful, a guide, a teacher. Oh, yes. Uh... For we intend to teach, to guide these, uh, these deluded unfortunates away from the snares of the imperialists and home again to the safety and security and love of the people. You understand? Certainly. Ah, thus, you do your friends a favor. Uh, I, I've never been involved in politics. <laughs> oh, life is politics. But I am always so busy rehearsing and playing that uh, I really... Of course, of course. But you are not too busy to enjoy the delicious fruits of our glorious people's country. No. Uh... So then, like all citizens, you must also perform your duty. Now, I have here um, your uh, dossier. My dossier? Of course. Everyone has a dossier. Oh, yeah. I shall make the following notation in it. Comrade Victor Velosky, being duly informed as to the serious nature of the task demanded of him, gives his enthusiastic agreement to cooperate completely. Ah, you will notice I have inserted the word enthusiastic. Yeah. You have already earned a plus on your record. Splendid. But what if I uh, don't hear any untoward remarks? Ah, a person with as gifted an ear as yours? <gasps> I'm sure you must hear a great deal, Comrade Victor. Yes, Comrade Colonel. And I know. I'll hear from you soon. Speak of the devil. Who is speaking of the devil? We were speaking of you. Praskovia and I. I'm coming in. Don't try to stop me. Be my guest. All right, Praskovia. Let's go. Go? Well, we don't rehearse again until tomorrow. Let's go home. Home? With me. You love me. I love you. We belong together. Victor, I think you're reading the wrong note. You keep out of this. Well, he can't very well. Uh... Sergey and I are going to be married. That's impossible. Why is it impossible? He's the best pianist in the world. No, he isn't. He may be in the top ten. Is that a reason to marry him? Well, I don't need a reason to get married. So, you see, old boy... Don't the... call me old boy. Don't patronize me with your superior attitude. You're angry about Praskovia. Yeah. What can I tell you, Victor? The exact words you told me, the better man won. Just wish me luck. All right. Sergey, I wish you all the luck in the world. See, Praskovia? He's really a good sport. You're going to need all the luck you can get. In light of certain information that is now in our possession, wouldn't you say there's an ominous ring to Victor's statement? After all, as we have just heard, Victor now possesses a certain power. But would he use it selfishly for his own ends? We must wait to find out when I return with Act Three. Help! Jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. So the Bible tells us. Yes, and jealousy is also a two-edged sword... The most dangerous of all deadly blades because once drawn from the scabbard, it may never be sheathed again. To continue. Praskovia, darling, I, I told you. What did you tell me? I told you when you got to know me better, you'd be sure to fall in love with me. And you did. Oh, I'm sorry, Sergei. But I didn't. I'm not going to marry you. But you said we would be married. Well, I know I said it. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Then you didn't mean it? No, Sergei. I didn't mean it. Why did you say it? Because I... I want to teach Victor a lesson. You... You're using me. Well, it was your idea. 
Were you the one who said, give Victor something to worry about? Oh, yes. Didn't but... you say, pretend to love me? What can happen? Either Victor will come running back and behave himself, or you'll discover that all along I've been the one for you. I'm sorry. The experiment didn't work. I can't help it if I still love Victor. Plus, Cove, if I could only make you see things as they really are. The way things are. I love Victor. I just can't help it. <laughs> Oh, don't stop on my account. It was very good. Thank you. Miss Praskovia here yet? It's early. In the second movement, six bars after the letter E. Yes, I know the part. A little more attack might be good. I thought I gave it a little too much. It could use just a bit more. I'll try it. You're not going to marry Praskovia. I won't allow it. You won't? I won't. What do you think you can do about it? I know I know how to stop you, Sergei. Do you? A word to the wise should be sufficient. Where it concerns Pascov, your wisdom has never been my long suit. I'd hate to do it. Hate to do what? Stop you. Just don't force me. If I can't have Praskovia, nobody else can. Praskovia... What are you doing? Can't you see? I'm getting my things together. Where are you going? Home. To Victor. Hmm. You've decided. There was never really anything to decide. You can't go back to him. Oh, please, Sergei. I'm sorry. Yes. And I'm sorry, too. How sorry, you'll never know. Come in, dear comrade Victor. You asked to see me. I know someone who, uh, as you so correctly informed me earlier, uh, so someone in need of guidance. Yes. A uh, deluded unfortunate who ridicules the people's government. A sick person in need of help. Uh, uh, yes. Ah, we have special areas set aside for that very purpose. And uh, who is this person? A friend, Comrade Victor? A close friend. Ah, you are being a true friend to him indeed. He completely misunderstands the function of a people's government. And we must send him away in order that he may learn. And to do that, we, uh, we must know his name. His name? Yes. Uh, it's... It's possible. I've been mistaken. Comrade, the first time is always difficult. You'll get used to it. Um, I'm sure I'm, I'm wrong. Ah, your best friend. It must be Sir Gabor Dyaf. You see, I had to help you. Uh, but but I, I won't enter that detail on your record. Now, go, Comrade Victor, and continue the good work. <laughs> Any mail, Olga Fedorovna? Mail? Oh, the usual outfit. Oh, now what is wrong with you, Viktor Ivanovich? Are you sick? Yes, I'm, I'm sick. I have committed a sin. Oh, oh, we don't have sins in this country anymore. The government did away with all that. We have crimes, yes, but sins, no. Still, I have sinned. And what have you done? Something so vile, so despicable. Oh, I know who that is. Praskovia? No, your blonde friend. Her? She's the cause of all my troubles. The blondes usually are. I have lost the love of Praskovia. Why do you say that? I saw the way she looked at Sergei. I'm being punished. But do you mind answering that phone? It's for you. Tell Marina I never want to see her again. All right. If that's the way you feel about it. Uh, hello? Who is this? Oh, Marina Krikori. Oh, you want to speak with Victor? Well, he told me to inform you. Just a moment. Hold on, Olga. I'll 
speak with her. Hmm. I'd better be the taker. I would have won the bet. Oh, he- hello, Marina. No, 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 no. I've, uh, I've been busy. Huh? Y- you need more talk for the magazine interview? Uh, so I, I can't come over. Uh, I, I must practice at home. Oh, yes, four or five hours a day. Well, uh, I wouldn't want you to get your editor angry. Uh, if all you want me to do is talk into a tape recorder... Uh, yeah, yes, all, all right. Uh, I'll be home in uh, t- t- ten minutes. Yes, Marina. Uh, au revoir. <laughs> tape do you need? I have enough. I'm glad you got what you need. (laughs) Silly Victor. I do not have what I need. What do you need? Can't you guess? Mon cher, kiss me. Uh, I I don't think we should. uh... Kiss me. Well, all right, it's just this once. Proskovia. Well, when when did you get here? Just a few moments ago. Well, I, I didn't hear you come in. So, you are the sweet and lovely Proskovia. Yes, the chocolate bar. Oh, <laughs> but she is charming, Victor. Well, I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, no, M- Marina was just leaving. She, uh, she came here to get some more tape for her interview. You see, there, there, there. That's that, that's her t- tape recorder. Oh, you. Never change. Darling, that, that isn't true. When I think of how I loved you, how I was willing to crawl back to you on my hands and knees, I come here and find you making love. Well, we weren't exactly making love. Well, suppose I walked in two minutes later. Two minutes? Uh... And you, mademoiselle, you think he belongs to you now, do you? Well, what can I tell you? <gasps> I suppose the best woman won. You chose her. Didn't you, Victor? Praskovia, I didn't. Please, listen. No. You listen. If I can't have you, well, neither can anyone else. Huh? Huh? Hey. Who's that at the door? Open. In the name of the people. It's three o'clock in the morning. Open. No, 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 please. Um, wait. Say, what is this? Colonel Rostov. Uh, Svetlana. I I didn't recognize you with your overcoat on. Silence. Sergeant, search the apartment. Corporal, put his clothes in a bag. But, but... I shall now read the sentence of the People's Court. Who, who... Whose sentence? Your sentence. How, how could I be sentenced? I was I was never put on trial for anything. You were tried and found guilty. But I wasn't there to defend myself. An irrelevant bourgeois detail. Citizen Victor Ivanovich Velovsky, you have been found guilty of anti-people's activity. You are sentenced... To a five-year course of re-education in the mines at Varemia. Varemia? Well, that's... That's almost at the North Pole. Sergeant, take him away. But you you can't! And if he tries to escape, shoot him! Hello! Hello! This is Captain Slotnik. Shape up. What is this? A rest home or a prison camp? Enter immediately when I call. Send in the new fish. Oh, things are too soft around here. Ah. What is your name? I'm uh, Victor Velosky. Ah, it's about time you showed up. Uh, comrade, Captain, there's a mistake. There, there must be a mistake. That's what they all say. Oh. Uh, You're in the right place. I've been waiting for you. Here you have, Comrade Captain? And so have the other two. The the other two? Yes, at last. 
I'm going to hear some chamber music. Chamber music? I can hardly wait to hear you play the Beethoven D major. The ghost, they call it. It has such marvelous musical texture in that second movement. But comrade captain... Uh... Now you have your violin. What are we waiting for? Uh, I don't understand. What's to understand? We're going to have a concert tonight. Or... Would you rather go to work in the mine? Oh, no, no, sir. You no. go in there and practice. Uh, and don't rush the adagio in the third movement. I heard you play it once. You got a lot to learn. Well, you got plenty of time inside. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Hello, Victor. Victor? Us. Korea. Sergey, what are you both doing here? Well, I'm here because you sent me here. I'm here because Sergey sent me here. And you're here because I sent you here. Sergey, can you ever forgive me? I think we've all forgiven each other. And if we haven't, we should. Praskovia, I love you. I always loved you, and I'll always love you. That thing with Marina Trigorin, she only came up to finish an interview. It, it meant nothing. I know, darling. She told me. She told you? Mm-hmm. When? Yesterday. She's here. Marina's here? Yes. And now that I know her, I find her a very interesting lady. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Sergei. Well, what's Marina doing here? Well, what are so many of us doing here? Someone probably said of Marina, if I can't have you, nobody else will. Well, shall we begin, gentlemen? Uh, I understand a mutual friend of ours is expected to arrive any day now. Comrade Colonel Svetlana. <laughs> you must be joking. Is anyone safe? <laughs> what a reunion we shall have. Hmm? Will you give us the downbeat, darling? And where will it all end? Oh, well. And. To answer Victor's question, where will it all end? In that kind of situation, obviously it must end when the people inside the prisons outnumber the people who are outside the prisons. At that time, those who are confined break their bonds. However, once free themselves, they begin to build prisons of their own. And so the entire process repeats itself. And what is it called? Why, history. We shall have some further details in a few moments. Your pictures are important, so when you get them developed, take them to a store with a sign that says, We use Kodak paper for a good look. Just catch for Kodak paper. Kodak paper. Kodak paper. Kodak paper. You'll know your pictures can look their best because Kodak paper will be behind them. Ask for Kodak paper wherever you see the Kodak paper sign. Just catch for Kodak paper. Kodak paper. Kodak paper. Why don't you pour on the snap? Pour on the snap. Pour on the crap. Barbecue sauce. Pour on the snap. Pour on the crap. Barbecue sauce. All right. Pour on the snap. Why don't you pour it on? Pour on the crap. Barbecue sauce. been said, and you've heard it before on our show, quis custodiat ipsos custodis, who shall guard the guards themselves, and not just the armed guards, the ones who carry guns and clubs, but the guards of all shapes, forms, and types, those who attempt to guard our virtues, our morals, our thoughts, our arts, and science, and literature, and especially those who are self-appointed. Our cast included Bob Caliban, Russell Horton, Ann Williams, and Carol Titel. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a prayer.
preview of our next tale. Well, you can't add, can't you? Yes, but I... Get yourself one of these pocket computers if you can. Uncle, I've added it three times. It always comes out the same. Then it's correct. Yeah, hand it over, I'll pay it. Here. $21.72. Yeah. Good Lord. 2172. The license plate? My address? Now this. It's... It's... Uh... Uncanny. I kept telling myself it was a coincidence. Just a coincidence. That's all it was. The same number turning up on the same day three times. A coincidence. That's all. But that didn't stop a shiver from running through me. That didn't keep me from feeling that the whole thing was uncanny. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Wells Fargo presents one of the surest ways to grow your money. A Wells Fargo CD account where you can earn a 5.00% annual percentage yield on an 11-month term with a minimum opening deposit of $5,000. Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash CD rates to open a CD account and start growing your savings with us. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. 